I'm writing this letter from my native village of Bohdanivka. Yes, where else could I be? Spring will be here soon and I'll be able to see them once again, to draw them. How beautiful they are, my flowers, my life. Nature became her teacher and flowers became the main themes of her paintings. Flowers, just like people, are alive and they have a soul, said prominent Ukrainian folk artist Katerina Bilakur. There fell on a canvas as a vivid burst of color within one brush stroke. Picasso himself gave great praise to the self-taught artist from Bohdanivka. The Soviet Kremlin wanted to have collections of her paintings and people from all around the globe come to Ukraine to see her works. I snuck out a wooden tripod outside because drawing always upset my mother. She thinks that painting has cast a spell on me. She was like, I can understand man, but a woman painting? Who'd ever heard of women being involved in such magical craft? You say that it would be interesting to learn how I became a painter. I will tell you, depending on my ability to narrate. I will tell you about the thorny path that I walked before I was able to achieve this high title of artist. Bohdanivka. It's now a village in Yahotin district, Kyiv region. These windy paths retain memories of Katerina Bilakur. The museum of the famous painter is located in her old house. Her statue with roses is the work of sculptor Ivan Bilakur, the son of her brother Georgi. The desire to draw accompanied me wherever I went or whatever I did. Even when going to sleep I hear and see it around me. Something is constantly saying that I should never leave it. It asks me to draw. The Bilakur family was considered as wealthy in their village. They had livestock, large house and lands. The father, Vasil Yosifovich, had a quarter of a hectare of land. The family had three children, two sons and Katya. On one occasion, her dad brought back a spelling book he bought at a fair. I didn't understand what it was, but I was so happy for this gift. I even jumped onto the stove. Literacy was so easy for me. I remember the letters, then syllables, and then small novels and poems in the spelling book. I learned it by heart within a week. The family decided to send their daughter to school. They tried to save on clothing and shoes. They decided to teach Katya to work with a spinning wheel. No one recollects exactly when the girl started to draw. Those were naive child sketches made with charcoal on a shred of fabric. I drew horses all over the school notebook of my brother Risha. My father was furious. He screamed at me and tore the notebook to shreds. They never gave me paper or pencil since then. However, the girl was caught drawing once again at the age of 14. Villagers believed the occupation had no use. They took action. The rod and she was forbidden to draw. Villagers called Katerina bewitched, which supported the beliefs of Katya's mother, Akulina Pavlovna. God has punished us by giving us such a daughter. People have their daughters already married at such an age. The parents have a son-in-law. Our girl, not to mention evil in the house, draws devils. On one occasion, Katerina Bilakur read about Mirhorod College of Ceramic Arts. She didn't know what the word ceramic means, but the word art added the belief that such a college educates artists. For the first time ever, the young woman leaves her village, Bohdanivka. The city of Mirhorod is a delight, famous Ukrainian writer Mykola Gogol once said. Who doesn't know Gogol's puddle? Katerina Bilakur arrived in this town inspired by her dream. The young woman's luggage consisted of two pictures, a copy of some painting and a sketch of the family house. The works were made on paper, bought specially for such an important event. Yet the dialogue at Mirhard College started and ended with one question. 
Do you have the document that proves your school education? Katarina Bilakor didn't have such a document and her paintings were never reviewed. It was a great disappointment. In despair, she threw her paintings into the college garden. What if students will see it, give it to teachers, and then they ask me to stay? Katarina was looking for someone, but she couldn't believe she had no chance here. Fine, don't let me study here, don't accept me. The time will come and I will become a painter. The young woman returned by foot to Bohdanica from Mirhard, a distance of more than 130 kilometers. Flowers and art saved her from spiritual calamity. I looked at Mother Nature and learned from her colors, shades and undertones. The flower over there is blue, yellow and red. The bush of grass, the twig of cranberry bent, and there is hop above it. Violet bellflowers are rustling in the wind. I transferred all these images to my paintings, and they turned out to be beautiful. Bewitched by flowers, she visited the local theater group in her leisure time, away from her rural work. It was organized by a teacher couple, Ivana Nina Kalita. Her parents agreed that she would attend the group only if she prioritizes her rural work. Katerina played passionately. She learned her parts in the yard and even in barns. Alexander Kravchenko also attended Bohdanovka theater group. He would later be called the rejected financier of Katerina Bilakur. Some say that she refused to accept a bouquet of flowers as a gift, with the words, if you are so cruel with flowers, what care can I wait from you? Flowers are living beings too. Katarina still wanted to get an art education. She decided to tempt fate when she learned about enrollment to the Kyiv Theatre College. Kyiv will most likely have painters, as I will paint while studying. There is a lot of work in the capital, and maybe someone will see me and appreciate my works. She wanted to leave the village and acquire a professional education and stay in the city of big opportunities. I didn't ask advice. I took a newspaper to know the street and the house number, money for a ticket, and so I went to Kiev. She prepared carefully for the journey, took her birth certificate and health certificate with her. Yet in theater college they also asked about her school graduation. Everything ended up the same as it did at Mirhur College. She had no certificate of graduation, just pain and disappointment. Alone and without creative support, she goes on a pilgrimage to her idol. Chernecha Hora in Kaniv, the place of worship of Ukrainian poet and painter Taras Shevchenko. Katerina Bilakur arrived here from Bohdanivka. It was Monday, no one was graveside. I could cry as much as I wanted. I was telling Taras Shevchenko, as if he was alive near me, that I want to be a painter. However, this path has a lot of thorns and sharp stones. You'd help me to become a painter if you were alive, Taras Hrihorovich. The people with whom I live do not understand me. I'm a stranger for them. The despair was so overwhelming that she decided to drown on a cold night in November. Fortunately, she survived. Her desire to live and to prove that she can do something more significant than rural work helped her. I will be an artist, I will learn myself if no one wants to teach me. Yes, this event cost her so much. Her legs got chilled to the bones and she had to walk with a stick for the rest of her life. After the suicide attempt, her father expressed his attitude about her daughter's hobby. Then draw, damn you. You understand neither good words nor bad ones. I will not fight with you anymore. I am tired of it. Charcoal drawings and shreds of fabric and plywood were history now, as were paintings using handmade dye with elderberry, cranberry, onion. She was less eager to work with pencils and watercolors. I love to work with oil paints. They look bright and their names sound like a fairy tale. Cinnabar, light and dark red, cobalt, dark blue, ultramarine, cadmium is red, lake is dark pink. These are my favorite paints. Katerina made brushes herself from cat's hair with whiskers of the same length, 9, 12 or 35 millimeters. 
She had a specific brush for every dye. Katerina must have had masters that taught her, since she knew how to prime a canvas so paintings would last longer. Teacher Ivan Kalita, who was an amateur painter, most likely could have helped her, or perhaps it was the iconographer from the neighboring village. I always paint it from life. I will take one object and draw it. I study its colors and forms. I would sometimes draw the same object a hundred times until I was happy with the result. Kata Bilakur creates Birch in 1934, one of the first paintings that gave her worldwide fame. A year later she creates Flowers by the Fence, another famous piece. And that is how she spent her years working the land at home and drawing. By the end of the 1930s, Ukrainian villages had the opportunity to listen to the radio. The mediocre black plate that enabled both happy and sad news to be broadcast. People then could not even imagine a day without the voice and wires. Katerina visited her relatives and heard the folk song Wasn't I a Gelder Rose in the Meadow, performed by the astonishing Oksana Petrusenko. It was the song or perhaps the voice or maybe something else that amazed Katerina so much that she spent the whole night writing a confession letter. She sent it to a quite unique address, Kiev Academic Theater, to Oksana Petrusenko. She also enclosed her drawing of the vivid Gelda Rose in the letter. Oksana Petrusenko was a solo singer of the Kiev Theater of Opera and Ballet. Her popularity knew no bounds. Folk songs and romances roared right across the whole of the Soviet Union and people considered her voice a symbol of Ukraine. The singer was so famous that the letter didn't get lost and she received it. The picture of Gelder Rose and Katerina's confession moved the artist. Petrusenko consulted with her friends with Ukrainian painter Vasil Kasyan and poet Pavlo Tichina. She visits the center of folk art and tells of the young painter and asks senior staff to find her. The authority and respect in which the singer was held favored a positive result for her actions. The order was sent to Poltava as Bohdanovka was under the rule of that region to visit the village, find Bilakur and ask about her works. The director of the Art Methodic Council of the House of Folk Art, Volodymyr Hitko, visits Katerina. He is amazed and instantly takes some of works to show his colleague and painter, Matvey Dantsov. The verdict is a conclusive one. They want to create an exhibition as soon as possible. Katerina Bilakur's first personal exhibition is unveiled at the Poltava House of Folk Art in 1940. All 11 of her canvases enjoy massive success. The artist from Bogdanivka is gifted with a trip to Moscow. Moscow developed at an accelerated pace at the beginning of the 1940s. Stone buildings are going up everywhere, new metro lines are being laid, and the walls of the new Moscow City Canal are being fortified. The Tretikov Gallery and Pushkin Museum enjoyed a calm existence among amazing Soviet constructions. Katerina Bilakur wandered here for hours. She was impressed by the works of the little Dutch masters, realist painters and French impressionists. The works of this venerable community both overwhelmed and perplexed her. She was unable to draw for some time. How can I be a painter? I am nothing. My scratchy drawings are nothing. I saw so much there. Everything was so beautiful, so far from me. How can I, a stupid village girl, think about art? How can I create something genuine? She tries to draw flowers once more after calming down. There was nothing better in the world than to draw flowers. I worked with such energy in late 1940 and beginning of 1941. My relatives were no longer angry with me because people were saying that I am a painter. Do you hear me? Academic people called me an artist. Katerina Bilakur creates her next masterpiece, Field Flowers, in 1941. I will always paint flowers. I love to work on them. I can hardly find the words to display my sense of love, my great love for flowers. 
Kiev, Petrosk Lavra. The unique Katerina Belokur collection is preserved in the Ukrainian National Folk Decorative Art Museum that is located on the Lavra's territory. Vasil Nahai, a former director, made it possible to save these works. He went to Bohdanivka at the end of World War II. He admired the pieces. Some of them he bought and offers to stage a personal exhibition for Belokur. Time had passed, and it seemed that people had forgotten about the artist. Not a single letter to her in the village, just agonizing silence. Katerina Vasilevna Bilakur then writes to the Poltava House of Folk Art. Perhaps you keep silence and don't write anything to me because you are not pleased with my works. Is it because I draw only flowers? But how can I not draw them when they are so beautiful? Oh my lord, when looking around, this one is beautiful and that one is astonishing. They are close to me and it is as if they talk to me. Who will draw us then if you leave us? I forget everything in this world and once again begin to draw flowers. Soviet general and marshal Semyon Budionny receives the parade in Red Square in Moscow on November 7, 1947. The country faced a difficult situation in this milestone year. The forest collection of grain for the state grain stockpile that left villages without seed and as a result hunger, but there was silence about this in the years of Stalin's regime. Bilakur draws a painting called 30 Years of USSR. In the tough 1947, this is how she described it. The topic of this painting was suggested by the Poltava House of Folk Art. I created the decoration for it myself. Fellow villagers recalled this. She was respected in the district center for creating a painting with emblems and banners. The head of the district executive committee, Yevhen Poshukailo, even came to see her and asked about her. As a gift for her work, he brought a 25 linear lamp, kerosene, and something else like that. The post-war biography of the artist from Bohdanivka looks quite good. She was received into the Ukrainian Artists' Union, received the title of Honorary Arts Worker of Ukraine and People's Artist of Ukraine. Her works are examined and studied. People write about her. Her pieces are exhibited regularly in Poltava, Kyiv, Moscow and overseas. However, she could not work to the orders of the Communist Party's administration. Yet she continued to draw flowers. She draw them, often combining both spring and autumn flowers, and such pieces was made in period from spring to autumn. She worked with passion, without rushing. The head of Bogdanivka village council said, she didn't want to draw a portrait of Stalin in honor of his 17th birthday in 1949. The district authorities were furious at this decision. Katerina Bilakur is the creator of not just landscapes, but of portraits as well. She wanted to create a fairy tale painting where storks brought a child. She returned to this theme several times, but the misunderstanding and bewilderment of those around her who waited for flower compositions turned out to be so great that the artist hid the fairy tale painting in her workshop room, and she never allowed anyone to enter her workshop. Flowers in my paintings were my strongest achievement, while portraits were not as good. I wasn't good at painting landscapes, I'm still learning to draw them. I'm not drawing them now because it's too cold and my legs are in pain. Summer in France is very sunny and hot, just like in Ukraine. The retrospective exhibition of Pablo Picasso for his 75 years old anniversary was held in Paris in June 1954. The maestro recalled his outstanding collection that he had brought from Moscow. The painter wanted to see the pieces once again and show them to European experts. Negotiations with the Soviet authorities went well and he could take 37 pieces from the Pushkin Museum and the Hermitage. At the same time, paintings by modern Soviet artists arrived for exposition at the International Modern Art Exhibition at the Louvre. Three pieces of art belonging to Bilakur, Tsar Spike, Birch and Collective Farm Field were among them. Pablo Picasso saw them and the whole world heard his opinion about them. If we had an artist of such talent, we would make the world talk about her. Picasso compared the citizen of the village of Bohdanovka with another great self-taught painter, Serafin Louis. 
This sounded like a surprise since he was often harsh towards modern painters. He called Katerina a genius. Yet what a shame, not all the pieces returned to Ukraine. Tsar Spike disappeared from the Louvre. It could have been a fan collector who ordered the theft, or robbers thought they would get an impressive amount for this piece on the black market. Katerina later recovered her piece from her memory. It was after the huge success in Paris that Billacour acquired many friends, artists and art historians who appreciated, respected and valued the talent of this genius self-taught artist. The artist even had several young students in Bohdanivka. Katerina Billacour wanted to move to Kyiv on many occasions so as to be able to communicate with friends, visit museums and concerts. All of this was so nice. She also appreciated the comforts of the capital, like electricity and a gas stove. Rural life always seemed to be a curse for her. You get the gas stove going to cook soup, borscht and potatoes. It takes so much time for me to cook something that I get so tired and then no longer even want to eat it. The woman almost never left Bohdanivka, except for those times when she went to Kiev and Poltava for exhibitions and her leisure in the House of Culture for Artists at the farm in Shevchenkivsky. With time, the family starts to have serious internal problems. Her father dies and Katya lives with her mother. Akulina Bilakur allows the brother of the artist to come into their house. He arrives with his wife and five children, even though the mother-in-law never liked the daughter-in-law. They argued a lot from the moment she moved in. Even the sister-in-law had a lot of hardships. The daughter-in-law worked on a collective farm and carried a big burden for the whole household. She could never forgive Katerina for her vocation, which was totally incomprehensible for village workers. My brother and his children are easy to get on with, I could live with them. But there was a real problem, my brother's wife, who hated me more than anything. It was unbearable. Oh my lord, I never knew that such evil and hateful people existed in this world. Katerina Bilakur was trapped in a vicious circle. She could not leave her old and sick mother in Bohdanivka. Neither could she take her with her, because she had no place. She would hide in her room, where she would draw yet another masterpiece, still alive. I cried a lot and fell ill. I came to the conclusion that iron is strong, but when rust affects it, then it will destroy it. The spring of 1961, with all of its flowers, did not bring relief to her. Along with the old pain in her legs, she felt acute pain in her stomach. Home remedies did not help her. In her last letter to the director of Central House of Folk Art, Bilakur writes, Dear Yulia Alexandrovna, I am writing to you with one request. Please send me three or four packages of Bessalol tablets. It's such a good medicine. We have no such medicine at the drugstore in Bohdanivka. We have only Tansal, which does not help me that much. If you get the opportunity to send me Bessalol, please add two lemons to the package. Her mother died in early June. Katerina, exhausted from pain, was taken to the district clinic. She was operated on, but the surgery did not work. Or was this surgery simply useless? The famous artist died that same day. Fate tests those who intend to attain a great goal. However, spiritually strong people will stand any trials. With clenched teeth, they will continue to go further to their goal. Fate awards them a hundredfold and opens up before them all the mysteries of beautiful and incomparable art. Katerina Bilakur Art historians evaluate the work of Katerina Bilakur along with the following extraordinary primitivist artists Henry Rousseau, Ivan and Yosef Generalich, Maria Primachenko, Niko Pirosmani. Her works are exhibited at international shows. Her reproductions run into thousands of copies. The doors of memorial mansion of this famous Ukrainian woman are open in the village of Bohdanivka. The Yahotin State Historical Museum manages this estate. Visitors from 40 countries have visited it. It was as though she was telling the world about the talent of her people, the deep-grown sense of aesthetics, the nobility of her soul, and how it is open to the beauty of this whole world. Until her last days, she associated painting and art with an epithet sacred. This unsophisticated Ukrainian woman defined it as her vocation. Oles Honchar, Ukrainian writer. A beautiful elm tree stands high near the Bilakur house. 
It is said that the parents of the artist planted it after their marriage ceremony. Katerina was looking after the tree when she lived here. Fellow villagers remembered that when people came to pay their last respects to the artist, the tree began to cry. On that dry, sunny day, the tree shed moisture in the form of teardrops. I am a resident of the village of Bogdanivka. I was born on November 23, 1900, into the family of a farmer. I'm a self-taught artist. My earthly life ended on June 10, 1961. I continue to live in my flowers, in my paintings. Forever yours, Katerina Bilakur.